Hello and welcome to my podcast on achieving fluency in English. I'm so excited to be here with you today to share my knowledge and experience on how to improve English language skills and become fluent. As someone who has learned English as a second language, I know firsthand how challenging it can be to master a new language. But I also know that with the right mindset, resources and practice, anyone can achieve fluency in English. In this podcast I will give you the road map to simple 6 steps to achieve fluency in English. My goal is to provide you with actionable advice and insights that you can apply to your language learning journey. So if you're ready to take your English language skills to the next level, then join me on this podcast. Let's start improving our English together. So we're going to start with the first step that is analysis. as we all know that the key to solving any problem is getting to the core of it so before solving our problem we need to know what exactly is our problem is it a grammar is it vocabulary or we are having trouble with sentence formation or structure or is it just confidence we are hesitant we have stage fear or we are not comfortable communicating with people in english or maybe it's voice modulation or pronunciation we are not confident that we are pronouncing the things correctly So which one is it for you? Think. Think what exactly is your problem? What are your pain points? Where are you lagging? What do you need to work on? Which areas? Speaking, listening, voice modulation or stage fear or whatever it is. Just find out your pain points and work towards rectifying them. That's it. That's all you need to do. There's another thing that you need to analyze which is to know which level of fluency do you belong to. Yes. There is a concept where you can know which level of fluency do you belong to. There are six categories that is A1, A2, B1, B2 and C1, C2. But these does not work like common grading systems. A1 here is the most beginner's level and C2 is the most proficient. Step 2, goal setting. Setting clear and achievable goals is an essential part of achieving fluency in English. Without goals it can be challenging to stay motivated and focused on improving your language skills. Here are some things to keep in mind when setting goals for fluency in English. Be specific. Set specific goals for each area of language learning such as speaking, listening, writing, reading, grammar, pronunciation, public speaking, whatever it is that you're aiming for. If you want to improve your speaking skills set a goal to have a conversation with a native speaker or any speaker who is good in English for a definite period of time in a day set realistic goals set goals that are achievable for you don't aim for fluency in a month but instead set smaller goals that lead up to your ultimate goal create a timeline for yourself and celebrate each and every progress that you make celebrate each achievement the third step is immersion which essentially means to create an environment around you that is conducive for you to achieve your goals with ease and faster for instance your goal is to achieve fluency in english right so you should surround yourself with people and activities that push you to speak in english join a community like mine the elite alliance or any other community that aligns with your goal this will not only give you the guidance you require but will create accountability within you and your co-members to stay dedicated and work harder so join a community and discuss your problems and struggles contemplate for solutions and eventually you will grow next step is to build habits you cannot become fluent in english unless you have the habit of speaking in english well the but on a serious note a very basic habit of speed reading can help you improve your vocabulary and your fluency at lightning fast speed Another habit that you can adapt is watching content in English. It can be movies, series, interviews, etc., anything. You can also try shadowing, listening to English podcasts and songs, and some other things that are thoroughly described in my course. So to understand all this in detail, you got to enroll. But for now, start with 10 minutes of reading and 2 minutes of imitation every day. Coming down to step 5, experimenting. When learning a new language, it's essential to try out different methods, resources and techniques to find out what works best for you. You may find out that you learn better through watching videos or listening to podcasts rather than reading textbooks. 
and that's completely okay. Try out various resources such as language learning apps, online courses, or language exchange partners. That's the best one. Don't limit yourself to just one source or one process. Experiment with challenging yourself in your language learning. Try reading books, watching movies in English to get above your current level. This will help you expand your vocabulary and improve your comprehension. Don't be afraid to take risks and make mistakes. Language learning involves trial and error and making mistakes is a natural part of the process. So go all out in and experiment as much as possible. Our last and final step is polishing an application. Learning any skill is worthless if you're not applying it somewhere. So polishing means to enhance your language projection, learn to improve your voice modulation so you can try various accents that are in demand. And then we all can leverage our skills in the real world. That's the application. There are many jobs that require fluency in English and you can pursue if you have strong English language skills. Some of the most common ones are teaching, both online and offline, content writing, content creation, and content editing. These are the highly trending jobs right now. So English is a great asset. Many companies, media outlets, and online platforms require content creators who can produce high quality written or spoken content in English. This can be your thing. Or writing articles, creating videos, producing podcasts, or managing social media accounts. These are all great options if you are good in English. Or you can try sales and marketing. Many companies require sales and marketing professionals who can communicate effectively with clients and customers in English. Again, accents do help here as well. You can work as a translator or an interpreter, helping individuals and businesses to communicate across language barriers. And there is much, much more. And don't do the course and you'll get to know all about it. Check out my website and YouTube link. All right, folks, we have reached the end of this podcast. If you think that this was valuable and gave you more clarity, then check out my courses, websites, and social handles, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.